like that. Um, this is season three, episode 95. Ooh. Got Carl Carlson in the studio, and we may or may not have Jay from Donor Lens. Um, he'll pipe in as um, he sees fit. He's either going to say nothing, something, or loads, depending on how that beer hits. Yeah, I feel. <laughs> yeah. Is it really episode 95? No, I just I, say- I just don't know when this is going to go out. That would be a very long season, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody needs to cancel us. I think that we've gone on too long. Yeah, well, it's time for season four. Yeah, no, I don't I don't know when this is going to go out. We're just taking advantage of the fact that you are in London and in my studio. So I thought we'd grab a quick chat. Yeah. Um, we're likely to be quite delirious um, in my case and Jay's case because uh, we've recorded about four collab tracks with you and an in, almost an entire film soundtrack overnight. Um, so we can kind of see through space and time. And in Carl's case, similar reasons, plus a week of uh, writing and sightseeing in London town. Yeah. So uh, first of all, have you had a good time? Have you enjoyed it? had yourself? a great time. I love London. What have you been up to? Uh, well, first we did a show. Mm-hmm. The um, Future, Sounds. Future Sounds event. Yeah, number which five. Which was great. Finally got to play at Folklore. <laughs> yeah, we were Yeah, good. we were supposed to do it the first time. Yeah. And the venue changed. And now we got to do it. I think that's right. I think we've been... I mean, Folklore is kind of our favorite venue, but we have also been slightly dicked around by them twice, I think. Slightly dicked around. <laughs> yeah, gen- gently dicked around. Gent- gently dicked around. <laughs> Gentle dick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> In what um, way? Uh, in just various ways, but like the the first gig you played, we ended up at Post Bar in Tottenham, which is yep. a very cool venue and folklore style. And the second time there was a miscommunication with them, we ended up at Luna Lounge, which was the show with Desert Sound Feels Warm at Night and Vanitas and Zero. Um, but yeah, back at Folklore, which is kind of home turf for us. Um, mm-hmm. It's always a good time. Um, a good time. Go. Oh. <laughs> um and uh, you, Runners Club 95, were playing alongside Patrick Fakeman, our very own Patrick Fakeman. Yeah. Mr. Wax, uh, Pizza Hotline, and uh, Three Bozos playing jungle music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed your set. Um, this time uh, you were under instruction not to tell the security at the airport that you were in London to do a gig. <laughs> yeah. So naive, first time we went there, I was super proud that the, I, I thought the guard was just like shit-chatting with me. Mm-hmm. He was like, so what's your business in London? Mm. I was super proud, I was like, actually, I'm going here to perform with my, with my band. <laughs> no, you aren't, no, you aren't. <laughs> no, and his face turned all like stale. Do you say stale? Like he went all stiff in his yeah, face. Yeah, I was, was done, like, yeah. Don't you need a working permit for that? And I realized what I've just have done, I was like... Oh, and Maria had already cleared. Yeah, Maria had already gone. Yeah, thing. so so he was like, "Where's the rest of your band?" And I was like, "They they were already in." He was like, "Well, pop off you two then." <laughs> but, and ever since, like when we went to New York, we did like this rehearsals on the plane. Like, okay, mm. we're on vacation. We're on vacation. We're here to see friends, and we never got asked again. <laughs> were you nervous about doing that in the states? Uh, yeah, I think the first time I told you had my- legit reasons though, right? Celebrating nuptials and things, celebrating marriage and no, that was like we got engaged in New York. Oh wow! So so there was no marriage okay. plans at that time, at least not on the way there. <laughs> um, no, we went to Paris for our honeymoon. Oh, lovely stuff! Yeah, yeah. and Disneyland. Disneyland, that was the main event. <laughs> Recommendation to everyone getting married. Disneyland is the honeymoon. Did they look after you? Did they know you were celebrating honeymoon? Did you get like extra special treatment? No. Oh man. No. Did, you didn't get like a fast track pass for the rides or anything? No. We're not big on rides anyway, so. Well, you can go to Disneyland, but you, you don't go on the rides. I, I like like the the uh, like the ghost castle stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Going into like the horror houses, yeah. and I like you know they they have this like um, piratey themed area, yeah, with like the skull dungeon cave. Yeah. I like that sort of thing. That's so cool. Yeah. What about Maria? Is she is she an adrenaline junkie? Are you holding her her handbag while she's riding? Well, absolutely the not. Okay, she's not an adrenaline junkie at all. But I think I th- think we're on this kind of the same level there. That's so cute. 
Anyway, we're talking about Paris far too much. We should be talking yeah. about uh, London. You should, you should say there's other, there's other theme parks are available. Yeah. Other theme parks are available. Yeah. Um, Legoland, for example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one. Jay, you've been to Legoland recently. Yeah. In Denmark. It's, it's um, uh, the happiest yeah. place in the world, but you, you witnessed... Um, I've run to Windsor. You nearly, um, you nearly got into a fist fight at Legoland Windsor, mm. didn't you? <laughs> yeah, let's not get into that. Okay, okay, scratch, scratch. Future sounds. Future sounds. Future sounds. That's insane. All right. Okay, well, maybe maybe back to the gig and okay. back to Runners Club 95 matters. I mean, uh, your trip to London kind of coincides uh, with the release of a single. You sort of um, hop, 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 hot off the back of yeah. the single release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which we think is called We Don't Go Out or possibly Yeah, we don't I go think out it's anymore. called that. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to know the title to your own tunes, isn't it? I mean, we forget, don't we? Well, the Midnight Lounge. Store, Midnight well, Store. Miracle Lounge, we've got like, there was like different spellings on the record and on the tapes and on the digital list. Yeah, of the track dimensions, right? It's yeah. unclear whether it's the size of your love, our love, my yeah. love. Yeah. It's just. It's yeah, level, you, level tend to, you tend to remember the project file name rather than the actual release track mm-hmm. name. Yeah, or what, yeah, what you call it, the abbreviation. Mm. But anyway, the single's a banger. Um, kind of Spanking. like a s- slight change of direction, maybe like more indie pop, kind of maybe slightly faster tempos, guitars a little bit more foregrounded, especially the kind of uh, solo section, the kind of shredded <laughs> solo section. Yeah. Um, there's kind of a story there, right? Like the, the, the middle section, like there's, there's other people involved. Oh, yeah. So we, yeah, so I can't play guitar like that. And we had like the idea that maybe it would be fun to do some sort of Van Halen style mm. guitar solo for that section. And I had just done a couple of guitar lessons with this guy called Matthew Hornton, um, which I knew was very much into that sort of playing. So I just asked him to lay down some tracks and he nailed it. So he's Caroline Polichek's tour guitarist, right? Yeah, yeah, he was on the tour that she just finished. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she's got some wicked players, doesn't she? Yeah, the, the the drummer as well. I, think, I know his Instagram handle is Star Power Drummer. He's the guy who does he recreates break beats. Oh, I don't know what his actual name is. Greg. Let's go, <laughs> with Greg. The girl that played bass also has. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but she makes music for herself and it's really good too. Cool. Yeah, so I reckon she's gonna be like blowing up anytime she, soon. She yeah, always make music. For what else are you going to make music for? Yeah, okay. She she has her project. <laughs> she has a project. I'm not the native <laughs> English speaker. I couldn't work out what you were going, getting on about that. <laughs> <laughs> you said you weren't going to say anything. And Jay's just yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Like, derailing us. Well, I'm like, just here. I'm doing screws. Yeah, the yeah. Oh, man. We've got a saboteur in the studio. But anyway, well, there hasn't been any saboteuring in terms of um, music making. So, I mean, we've been in the studio the last couple of days which is probably why we're completely delirious <laughs> the remember, conversation might not be free-flowing but. i just remember when you were, you were saying earlier about um about people who thought that um you've been sabotaging their projects overnight calling into the customer service. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah that yeah, made yeah. me laugh so much so yeah you might need to explain that carl like what your your day job is tech support for for reason the the daw yeah and um yeah, I believe you. You were saying you get some quite conspiratorial people accusing you of all sorts. I of guess things. you get that everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people like that will show up everywhere. But I mean, I'm not sure if I can talk about this. So we've been in the studio, Jay, myself, and Carl, um, trying out some uh, prospective runners club slash or times donor lens tunes so hopefully they will see the light of day at some point in the future yeah and um overnight jay and i were also working on some soundtrack stuff for the nobody here vaporwave documentary which does exist and is a real thing and w- is making progress we promise <laughs> but yeah we were um staying up late working on soundtrack stuff for that so yeah tired tired boys in the studio but um good music will come of it yeah. you should tell Lud- ludwig Göransson. That you made an entire oh, yeah, yeah. theme score overnight. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're exaggerating, really, but we we wrote a good sort of four or five cues and kind of have got a sound palette going for the film. Yeah. So um, yeah, we're pleased with our work and um, the the film really is taking shape. So 
thank you for your patience and um, yeah, remain patient and uh, a good film will arise from all this. Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 chat about the show. Let's go. Let's go back to folklore and um, like, uh, did you enjoy playing your set? Like, did you enjoy seeing any of the other acts on the bill? Like, how was it for you? Of course. That's yes. Full yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course we did. Um, I was telling you guys like before. Um, I love those thirty minutes on stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do not love the one month of practicing before, but that's yeah. just you gotta keep. Keep up. Uh, what do you say? You gotta not keep up with that. You gotta put up with that. Yeah. Is that proper? Yeah. 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 Um, That's the the part that the other people don't see, right? Yeah. The yeah, audience yeah. doesn't see that. The kind yeah. of behind uh, the scenes stress. I really liked that Mr. Wax was doing some big beat stuff in his mm. set. That was cool. I'm into big beat. I think big beat should have its um, moment. It plays well with future funk, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's quite sort of. Yeah. Brash and loud and over the top cartoonish yeah. dance uh, music. It's fun, isn't it? And we had this like drum and bass had its moment. I feel mm. like Big Beat could also, you know, had a bit of yeah revival. Yeah, I think Clanton's definitely interested in that kind of stuff and all the, the baggy beats kind of stuff that he, he does in his solo work. Yeah, that's definitely got echoes of I'm sure Chemical Brothers and Fatboy Slim and Chumbawamba and all that is in mm-hmm. is in his DNA. Mm. It sounds like it to me. He's he's definitely an anglophile. Like when when Jay and I went to see him, he seemed like absolutely stoked to be in the UK. And he played like a a breaky. He did like an encore breakbeat set, didn't he? On his um, beep, 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 beep. calculator four hundred four calculator <laughs> <laughs> on the cash register. You've got your games on your phone. <laughs> mm. That was fun. Yeah, and Mr. Wax's set was wicked. Uh, I always enjoy meeting all of you. Like, that's really the best part of, like, going whenever, like, to London or wherever we've been playing. The best part is actually to just meet up with, like, the Wave Wave community and all the people. Well, we had a nice hang before, didn't we, at the yard sale pizza across the road? Yep. We had, like, an insanely prompt load in and sound check and everything was like weirdly efficient for a live show like we're used to scrambling around for di boxes and missing people and missing bits of gear and stuff but it was all kind of working well so we had it was a bit a scary pizza. though because the audio engineer was like i may not be here during the night so you just yeah. gotta keep that happens every time i mean that, yeah. that that's just folklore for you i think oh, really? they're used to saturday nights being dj only or like in which case you don't really need yeah. like a sound you need a sound engineer to set up i think he was hoping to set up and go home and then he saw a three-piece suite well he saw a runner's club with an amount of technology and then yeah, he saw three piece three-piece suites with an unnecessary amount of technology um, <laughs> <laughs> given that Enzo Enzo was essentially DJing and me and Jay were essentially just making an absolute racket on and it starts off fairly like easy like okay you just need to remember to plug these two in mm. here but then you also need to like mute this one and set yeah. this switch yeah, here it was, and make sure this he level... sent us on a bit of a quest didn't yeah, he? Yeah. you need and to solve this riddle and then you yeah, need to... yeah. and you're <laughs> nervous as is yeah, with yeah. like the, the performance like and then you need to remember like okay like yeah, the, yeah. the mixer needs this knob turned yeah, like yeah. this or we will have like you know yeah, and don't, don't know. forget the, the secret yeah, password yeah, yeah. and then my cable started to like it's cutting out, out a bit yeah, yeah. right when we started the gig so it was a bit like um, I didn't panic no. but I could have Wow, some sort of um, dashing knight came to the rescue, didn't he? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, he got me. <laughs> I fixed it. But yeah, yeah, your set was wicked. Um, Thank you. No, it was, it was, it was, your set was wicked. And actually, like, even because I, I was having to work the door a little bit whilst your set was on, but folklore set up that we can still hear the, the sound from the live mm. room. Mm. So, um, you know, everybody in, in both spaces, in the live room and in the bar, we're enjoying the music and um it was cool going back and forth actually like hearing it mm. in the kind of but not like, having to see it no no, no, no. <laughs> well yeah i mean i could, could do both but yeah no it, was, it, it, it worked really well um yeah in the kind of sweaty kind of gig space um it's quite a vibey gig space isn't it lots of plants and cool lights and like yeah 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 random that. random junk and then yeah in the in the bar space as well was it it was it was like a really warm kind of early summer evening and it was it was stayed light kind of yeah. forever and it, yeah it was nice in the kind of yeah you could hear yeah see see daylight and enjoy your tunes and then go in and in the kind of pitch black space and 
enjoy enjoy it that way as well. It kind of changed with the environment. Yeah, it was, it was cool. I always liked it. It's the same thing with the Disneyland stuff. I like bars and cafes where it feels like you walk into a forest or like they made it into like a. Do you have that in Stockholm? We have uh, uh, like a Thai restaurant called Kopanjang, and it's you know it's just like. Uh, do you say foli- 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 yeah, foliage? Yeah, foliage. Yeah, yeah, foliage, and like they have like old. You sit in like these old like jeep cars. Wow. Yeah, so it's yeah. really like proper. We don't have so many themed restaurants in London these days. Like the Rainforest Cafe was the big one, and I think like that's like a big like touchstone for vaporwave producers. The like Rainforest Rainforest Cafe like imprinted on their brain. It's like the 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 South Park guys as well are obsessed with Casa Bonita. Oh yeah, you know, the, the, the the themed Mexican <laughs> restaurant. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a real place. Yeah, yeah, they, Casa Bonita, they bought it. Yeah. They bought it. They did. Yeah, yeah, because it was <laughs> of it, course because I did. think it costs quite a lot to run. I don't think it makes enough money <laughs> on the on the you know fajita sales to cover the. That's the actually cost like of the that's, synchronized divers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's actually on my bucket list. Like, if yeah. I go to America again, yeah, uh, we we even tried to go there when we were in Los Angeles. Our, is it in like, Los Angeles? No, it's no, in it's Colorado. Like, Colorado. Oh, it's in, yeah. it's in Colorado. Yeah, but you know, coming from Sweden... <laughs> it's a Mexican, themed Mexican restaurant in Colorado. <laughs> coming from Sweden, you don't really understand the distances. You oh, get yeah, that it's funny. far, but you don't get how far far actually is. So it's like, well, we can get there. <laughs> we can get there in a day. And it's like, no, we can't. We just mm-hmm. walk there. Yeah, we just walk there. No, I mean, even we'll just take the train there. And it's like, there's no trains. No. But yeah, hopefully you get to go to Casa Bonita one of these days, just like Eric at Cartman. Some, yeah, at he, some his, his, yeah, his journey to Casa Bonita required some logistics, right? Involving yeah. kidnapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's literally me, like, uh, tricking Maria that we're going somewhere else. So she would oh, yeah, agree yeah. to go there just be, to eat at, like, yeah, a restaurant it's, it's from South Mexican Park. food in America. Yeah. <laughs> that's very, very funny. Yeah. What on earth were we talking about before Casa Bonita? Folklore. Yeah, <laughs> it's got it's got a touch of the the theme restaurant about it for sure. Yeah, I um, like theme restaurants. Mm. That's it. Period. Well, you didn't go to a theme restaurant, but so the purpose of your visit, as I understand it, was kind of threefold. Uh, one was to obviously play the Future Sounds show. Two was to do some writing uh, with Donor Lens, and you also kind of hooked up with a, a bunch of other writers yeah. and musicians, including Midori Yeager, who. Um, yeah features heavily on the Donor Lens era area stuff. But um, as I understand it, the main purpose of your visit was to go to a tiki bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, and you succeeded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, where, where did you go to? What did you drink? Can you set the scene? Yeah, so again, we're on the themed bar it, uh, subject here. Yeah. We went to it's like... Paperwave as fuck, isn't it? Mm, yeah. There should be like tiki themed wave wave. Mm. Anyway, so we went to a place called the Beachcomber. Mm. It's in Nothing Hill area. Yeah. Uh, it was good. It was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. had a Mai Tai. I tried a zombie they had on the menu. Because do, do you know the story about the zombie? Mm-mm. Okay, so the original uh, restaurant that invented the zombie, on their menu, it said like uh, limited to two per person okay, per evening yeah, so you yeah. could like you a could... martini because it's so strong yeah oh it's the same yeah, 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 martini. Yeah. okay yeah. yeah so it was like you can't have more than two of them per night because you they do die. that with any cocktail where it's like the cocktail element is booze mixed with more booze mixed with more yeah booze, yeah, yeah. Right? i think it's like three types of rum in it. yeah yeah um they added at this place they had that on the menu as well mm. limited to two per person because no one has ever drunk drank Three and survived. <laughs> and survived. Like a challenge. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'd survive. It's just you'd be in a. You wouldn't be in any state to be on. You'd become a zombie. <laughs> premises. <laughs> they just kick you out. Yeah, become a zombie mm. indeed. But anyway, go there. They enlightened me that the other because I just before I came here, I googled like what's the best tiki bar in London, mm-hmm. and this and another one was the top hits. Yeah. Uh, the other one, I think it's called Mahiki. Yeah, that's a celebrity kind of spot. Yeah, yeah but they told me it closed. It's not around oh, anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah. COVID casualty, Mahiki, rest in peace. Mm. <laughs> not that I ever went there. Don't um, take my, this let, episode, we're going to call Show Me The Way To The Next Tiki Bar. I think. That's show Me The Way To The Next Tiki Bar, yeah. So, yeah, I think, uh, don't take my word for it, but I think it's closed. 
That sounds about right. Well, pour one out. Pour out a Mai Tai for Mahiki. Very cool. So you, you've had 10 days in London. Yep. Or show, yeah. The show was kind of pretty much at the start. Yeah. Um, in between, you've done some... I mean, do you want to quickly like gloss over any writing sessions you've done or any kind of uh, tourism highlights from London? I mean, we had like two very productive days now. I think we fleshed out four tracks or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that's that's the three of us, Runners Club and, and Donor Donner Lens, Lens. Yeah. yeah, at my at my home studio in northeast London. And yeah. yeah, we've been kind of in a bit of a flow, a yeah, bit, yeah. bit of a mad flow, doing lots of different things. And I'm sure some of it will see the light of day. At least the first track we did, it's gonna be something. Mm. <laughs> it, was, that's, it was downhill from there. Yeah, some of them I don't think no, it was like but, yeah, but we made four like, very very different things. No, yeah, like the f- all four tracks are good. Mm. But the first one feels like a complete thing. Mm-hmm. The other ones needs, you know, something more. That's why I've, yeah. I'm very certain that the first one is going to actually be released at some point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's long overdue. Um, Jay and I were listening to a demo of uh, a collaborative track we attempted probably four years ago, yeah. maybe five. Yeah, <laughs> and there's there some good bits. The one, <laughs> the one that we referenced, um, William Orbiton. Maybe, maybe that's something else. This didn't sound anything like William Moore, but this sounded like God knows what. I mean, it sounded like Runners Club 95 with like a v- really big guitar riff in it. <laughs> like Wasn't an Arctic big... Monkeys guitar riff. I think we... we were just like adding stuff. Like you yeah, sent us yeah. some tracks and we added some stuff and then you added more stuff. And it, in yeah. the end it was like, how how do we go from here? Like, yeah, it's so yeah, yeah. Full. I think we backed ourselves, we painted should... ourselves into a corner. You should play it. On. Mm, yeah. Yeah, uh, play on the podcast. Why? What's wrong with you? Why are you doing a coward for? Yeah, fair. Um, Just play it. And it plays here. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think this doing doing it in person has like made a big, big difference. Yeah. It's really nice. Actually, it's rare for me, myself and Jay to work together in person. And it's really good for productivity. Mm, yeah. And um, I think we're, we're thick-skinned enough to kind of take criticism from yeah. each other yeah. and to kind of... Um, tune into each other's wavelength and stuff but yeah we we were talking about it that collaborative stuff is very fatiguing i mean i guess it was probably quite strange because um maria's been remote working the entire time she's been in london so she's been working like a quote unquote like straight day job yep and you've been going off doing writing sessions and stuff and like i'm sure she's very understanding but like coming back home being like oh i'm really tired from playing synthesizer all no. day <laughs> like, yeah but i haven't drinking been like beer that. with my friends but it is tiring and nah, it does I, involve... I haven't really been like that yeah. it's just like we just go out and eat like yeah it's not really that demanding of my energy when i get home mm-hmm. has ball been, been more of a case that oh i really need to go to the bathroom first before <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair because you've been covering a lot of ground i think you've realized that london is a very big place because um you you the, the gig was in east london yeah i'm quite north Midori Jaeger is deep down south and you're in the west. So I think you've you've actually um, done like, a, you've covered an impressive amount of ground and you've got to see kind of real London, which is good. Yeah, yeah. Have you, have you done anything touristy? Let me have a think. Yeah, of course. I, can you call it touristy to go for a run in Hyde Park? I think that's a lovely thing to do. Yeah. I love being a tourist in my own city. Um, we, I'm sure we've said this before, but we discovered... I reckon kind of by chance that Donor Lens is an anagram of Londoners, and uh, is? Jay and yeah, and Jay and us, Jay and I are both born Londoners. I mean, Jay doesn't live here anymore, and I mean, I'm stretching the limit of London out here in the sticks. But yeah, being a tourist in London, I mean, it's an amazing city. Yeah, it clearly holds. It clearly has a draw for you. Because you planned this trip. Yeah. What is it about London that appeals to you? Mm-mm. I think it's the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, I much more prefer... So I like London and like New York. That's sort of my vibe. Because we went to New- uh, LA this fall. Mm-hmm. And I just realized that I'm more into the vibe of London and New York. New York and London have a lot of similarities, yeah, to I be f- honest. And I feel I think, that. Like we were, I would think possibly the three of us felt it. Like LA, it definitely took me like two or three days to kind of get a sense of what the place was. Yeah. I think like New York, I mean, I've been plenty of times before, but it's pretty seamless 
going there from yeah. London, but but LA is it's just a different beast, isn't it? Exactly. I kind of like the more on the go mm-hmm. vibe of it. Like everyone was always in like trainers and like casual sporty clothes because they were always like you know on the go to like a meeting or whatever. That that suits me better than like the bit more relaxed style of LA. Mm-hmm. From what well, the I kind saw. of the be- the beach vibes and the. Or the, the kind I of guess. the glamour, the Hollywood. I didn't country. really see the glamour. No. It was much less glamorous than I thought it would be. Yeah, we went to the Hollywood Hills, didn't we, to go to the observatory and that you see some glamour there, don't you? Mm-hmm. And you see some around the beach you see some very beautiful people or some very cosmetically mm-hmm. enhanced people. Yeah, but, but it's a different aesthetic, isn't it? The the walk of fame, mm-hmm. you know, with the stars. Yeah. I had just imagined that as this, you know, huge luxurious street and it's just a normal street yeah yeah nothing special mm. apart from the stars uh okay so back to what the was, question what was your favorite star that you saw? okay so i we're realized i realized when i went there <laughs> like when we were on the street i realized that i had a star in mind that i'm i was looking for a specific yeah. one and i asked maria are you looking for a specific one and she was like yes i am uh did you also go there? Yeah, yeah. Were you looking for a specific one? Like No, but we saw the Beatles. The Beatles are very close to the Capitol Records building, aren't they? They're on that turn. Okay. That was nice. So it wasn't like you were... Because I reckon like you want to take a photo. Yeah. So you're looking for a specific one mm-hmm. that you would like to take a photo with. Was yeah. that Beatles for you? We like, honestly, we, just, we did honestly. We, we do you know we more or less stumbled across it, didn't yeah, we? Because we, we went to out, Amoeba Records, didn't we? Yeah, we got out of a taxi and I was like, oh look, this the stars. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? It's like I, yeah. I like sort of bumbling around on holiday and be like, oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Oh yeah, it was the same. Yeah, okay. Like, like we didn't plan to do. We actually went to go and meet. Um, yeah, Groove Remote uh, and his yeah, partner. Aldo. Yeah. And, okay. Um, his wife, and um, it was kind of just. On ad hoc random yeah. trip, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We literally just got a taxi to like where we'd kind of agreed to meet them, and it was like, yeah, it just happened, the, which was nice. Yeah, and then yeah, we saw the Beatles. I can't remember the last we saw. saw, saw Tina Turner, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah. What about you? Uh, no. I saw loads, but the one I found myself looking for was the Backstreet Boys. Hey. And I found it. I think we saw the Backstreet Boys. Yeah. Yeah. They're honorary, honorary Swedes in your heart because the, Max Martin is so responsible yeah. for yeah, the yeah, sound, right? Yeah, We've yeah, been cool. talking about that kind of thing quite a lot, haven't they? Like your your references. That was actually music. really cool growing up because mm-hmm. Backstreet Boys, that was kind of my first venture into pop music. That was the, yeah. like the first record that I you know, bought because I wanted to buy that record. Mm-hmm. And I was like eight, nine, something like that. Um, so at that time for a Swedish kid, it was really cool that you heard on the news that the songs were written by Swedish people yeah. and that they recorded the stuff in Stockholm and stuff like that. That was actually really cool. Maria, we're going for Kristen Stewart, if I don't... Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was the one she was looking for. That's cool. Yeah. Um, mm. does... But back to the question. I'm just yeah. going to answer the initial question. Mm. I don't uh, know what it was. <laughs> what it is that I like about London. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, I prefer the like the fashion and mm. music subcultures of london mm. to new york or los angeles what about back home what about compared to stockholm well i mean i know you're not in stockholm anymore but i mean uh, in terms of fashion i think fashion is fairly similar to maybe what's going on in new york london but mm-hmm. slightly after yeah. so it, it hits stockholm a bit later but it's sort of the same yeah um You've talked about that before. In yeah. The, um, the Nobody Here documentary, we kind of collected something that stuck with me that you said was about kind of a delay of American culture hitting Sweden as a yeah. kid. Like you would get the cartoons and you would get the movies and you would get the, the toys and the gadgets. They yeah. would come yeah. like, a, a year after, after they hit Yeah, the it's States close now. Of- yeah. Due to like social media, we because yeah. we can see like instantly what's going on. Yeah. But back then, you know, if we had like, say... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. It would take them like a year or two after it started to air in America yeah. to like see, okay, that's something that we could buy for for Sweden. And then they also would have to like record Swedish dubs for it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it would take that some stuff time. takes time. Yeah. Fair uh, enough. But yeah, I just like the, um, like the music scene of London more than cool. any other place in the world. Well, hope, hopefully you'll be back. 
We can I do will some more be shows, back. Do some more writing. Yeah. Um, you can do some more collabs. With, yeah. With hopefully, my 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 intention is for, to make this like a at least a yearly trip, but maybe like Lovely. a biannually. What a treat! Mm. Well, you're welcome here. <laughs> what a treat! Yes. Um, there's clearly like a UK influence on your side project, which is called Fern, with yeah. like interesting punctuation. I think it's all lowercase and there's a dot after the F. Yeah, so it's F dot E R N. Yeah. And then three underscores. Oh shit, I forgot about the underscores. Yeah, underscore, underscore, yeah, yeah. underscore. So, I mean, if you're not familiar, if you're a Runners Club fan but didn't know about Carl's side project, you should check that out. And that kind of skews more into the kind of like skippy dance music territory. And there's a big sort of UK garage kind of speed garage influence on that. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of stuff like Fortet's Kieran Hebden or KH um, uh, alias. And uh, I was playing, well, you said you weren't even familiar with them, but like Caribou and Daphne kind of stuff. That it reminds mm. me of that a lot. I think I was playing you some of those tracks and you and seem to kind of resonate with you. Yeah, you I like it. it. But it's not, it wasn't a conscious it. influence. No, cool. it's really, it's really all inspired by an act called Two Shell. Mm. And then there's this label called Cloudcore that mm -hmm. releases similar music. And there's a Japanese group called Peter Parker 69 that I also like. <laughs> <Yeah. But laughs> that, that makes me laugh every time. Yeah, yeah, Peter Parker 69. I thought you were making up band names when you mentioned uh, that for the first time. But yeah, and then, you know, I just love artists like Caroline Polacek mm -hmm. and OK Lou, stuff yeah. like that. She's got like a bit, the, when the breaks kind of kick in, again, shout out star power drummer, when the breaks kick in in her tunes, like there's there's kind of like a, a UK edge to it, especially when she brings in Dido. To, oh yeah, to, to yeah, 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 she's, she's got Dido and Grimes. Grimes on that tune. Yeah. Future sounds. Yeah, I mean, we haven't mentioned, but you were the first ever guest on this podcast, I think. I hope that's right. Yeah, sounds, um, sounds familiar. And that was an awful long time ago, three seasons ago. And we think that uh, No Sugar Added had come out, but sponsored content <laughs> certainly hadn't. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah well, so right, we have yeah. not chatted to you since sponsored content came out. Um, yeah. Maybe it'd be cool to chat a little bit about uh, sponsored content and like what kind of thing you're going for and like how you think it's been received. So, wow. I mean, we made that album during such a long period of time. So, and I'm like this, I get inspired by something. Yeah. And then I want to do that thing. And then, you don't know, two months goes and there's something new that I want to do instead. Yeah. So, when we make an album, it's really hard to make just like stay cohesive to one idea the entire way because the making of an album is such a long journey. Yeah. Uh, so I think that would be like multiple things. At some point, we wanted to do like a straight city pop album, but mm -hmm. then we went into uh, more. What if Max Martin would have done Wave Wave? Yeah. And and I think we even like. We had a period where we were just discussing making a like an anime soundtrack yeah. type of thing. There's that piano piece, isn't there? The, which has like a Studio Ghibli quality. To yeah. It. Studio Ghibli. Song. Yeah. What, which one? What's that one called again? <laughs> oh, we <laughs> ended up naming that track "This Too Shall Pass." Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the idea. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Uh, uh, uh. There's the cool kind of fitter, happier style. Text, That's my favorite text text. Yeah, one. yeah. It's called um, definitely a reference to "Fitter, Happier" by yeah. Radiohead. I I've heard the 1975 done a track like that as well. Yeah, uh, that's cool. You also sh you showed us this weekend that cool serum trick where you load up some speech into into the instrument and you use a comb filter to kind of cycle through through the text and stuff like so I think maybe like cool chops and vocal effects it seems to be something that's on your mind at the moment I think that tune was really I ran because I had like mm, what's it called not Microsoft Sam but the Mac version yeah, of that yeah. well, I don't text to talk. speech yeah, text in to Mac speech one. Yeah. Uh, I had this like text that I had written I feel like that song is really dear to my heart because even though it's just like spoken words by a computer, the text is actually like something that I want to communicate. Mm -hmm. So it does actually uh, say something that I would like to say. Cool. Yeah. And is that important for the album as a whole? 
No, uh, not not that I thought about. Because mm -hmm. um, I can't speak for Maria there. I know she's very into lyrics, but I'm more like melody production. Yeah, that's the, the important bits for me. Um, but on that track, I felt like I wrote some stuff that I actually felt like I wanted to put out in the world. And we ran it through that sort of text-to-speech machine. And I had that printed through like a vocoder and output portal. Oh, yeah. Like three times. And then I chopped up the results cool. to like this one take of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, you've been talking about Ableton grain delay. Like the, the portal does, does much the same thing, really, doesn't it? I think I bought Portal because I thought it would do like yeah. a similar thing, but you can't. It does cool things, but yeah. it's not really the exact same thing as Grain Delay. Cool. We're, we're three boys with three different doors, aren't we? And we've each got envy about yeah. each other's. I'm Ableton man. You're a, you're a Reason Boy, and Jay's a Logic. Log he's a Logic Pro. Um, like, what? Which of the tunes from uh, sponsored content do you think have like the most? Um, kind of which which hit hit hardest when you play live because you played a, a a few of them at your at your folklore set and you also yeah, yeah. Mm. i think you even had like a kind of medley aspect as well where you were you were working refrains from from songs across multiple points of the set didn't you yeah okay yeah. so we always do like mash up things when yeah. we go live uh from the new album i would say serena is the one that yeah, we usually get some comments it's got like you know. a lovely like madonna yeah yeah party. definitely like, like Isla Bonita. or the lombada what's that the forbidden dance the lombada what's this can we do it <laughs> you, you haven't heard the lombada I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the forbidden dance it's the forbidden dance yeah i was never allowed to you weren't partake. smitten as a kid with the lombada what is you this you weren't allowed to do it you know the melody it's like, na, 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 I mean, I know that in the form of Jennifer Lopez and Pitbull. Oh, that, that, I mean, I like J Lo, yeah. but that song is just a disgrace. Like, yeah. really? That's where it's from, right? Is it? It's like a Europop kind of classic song. No, it? no, it's like a proper like uh, Latin dance song or oh, something from it? the late eighties. Might you hear it in a tiki bar? No, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not here in the in the in the Latin clubs. Wow, I hadn't I hadn't really. Well, I mean, I knew it was a sampled tune, but I thought it was like a Europop <laughs> kind of sample. <laughs> it's like accordion and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's definitely a bunch of that in the in the Selena tune. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we definitely referenced that, and we referenced La Isla Bonita. Yeah. And I think there are some uh, Domino dancers as well, Pet Shop Boys. Cool. Yeah. That's sort of what we went, we went for there. That's wicked. Yeah, yeah, but that's usually the song that people, um, yeah. you know, give us a shout about after the shows now from the new record. Is um, cool. I'm glad you called it the new record because I was getting a sense that you're like that record's out and your brain's on to kind of new things. Like, is is that kind of how you're wired? Like, you're you're once something's out, you're kind of focused on new stuff and you're not looking behind so much. That's really the way to stay sane. Okay. I realized like when you release stuff, you get yeah. so like stressed because you start to like you flick through like how does this perform, how many streams do we get, yeah. stuff like that. You get like all like on release day, mm. you basically just sit tense all day and be like, <laughs> Watching how Spotify is this performing? What's happening? What is people commenting? Yeah. Like, and I, and I think that's just the same with whatever you do. If you put something out, you just mm. like on release day, you just sit on the internet. Yeah, yeah. You gotta so, relax about it, don't you? With time. Yeah, and for me, like the cure for that has been to like when something is out yeah. i'm already focusing on the next stuff mm -hmm. so even though something isn't performing as i hope it's like okay but this one that i'm working on is now is so much better so that's gonna be streaming sites and tiktok and things are so weird as well because old things can suddenly pick up mm. a really strange life mm -hmm. of their own like we've the biggest donor lens tunes by streaming numbers are things that kind of were sleeping you know they're fast asleep and then they oh, really? get absolutely blasted on some playlists desert sand was talking about this as well i mean his numbers are good across the board but um like his biggest tracks are like random interlude tracks that get picked up on ambient playlists and stuff and mm. just just things go can go absolutely ballistic all these old bands that get rediscovered by kids on tiktok and stuff yeah. and, you know you have to scramble to reform mm. um you know 
it's a, it's a, the, the way people consume music and all the algorithms and stuff, it's kind of a funny and, well, not funny and not funny, strange place out there, isn't it? And, mm-hmm. you know, I think staying sane, like you said, is, is really important. And yeah, just um, staying sane by writing new stuff. That's really cool. I mean, I think we can start to wrap it up. I mean, talking of new stuff, like what what is next for Runners Club 95? Uh, so we started like, it took us a few months to... Because usually right after we made an album, we had a pretty good sense of what direction we want to go. This time mm-hmm. it took us like a good six months or something before we one evening had just like, it just struck us like, okay, now we know, like this is what we're going for. So we yeah. made like a, a playlist. I'm not going to tell you yet. Not, cool. not wait. So you're talking about the album after sponsored? Yeah, what we're okay, working so on now. You're gonna overtake, uh, catch up, or overtake me and Jay, because uh, we've always got friendly competition between our duos. But we're uh, Jay and I are yet to. Um, we don't know what's what post Rose Room. No, the post Rose Room sound is. Maybe I'm playing it down. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean we've 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 got things. We've got know. things in the pipeline. But yeah, we um. You, well, we make, st- you make Surgeon Pepper and then we go ahead and try and make pet sounds. Mm. And then you make, I don't know, what Beatles next move was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's an element of that, isn't there? Not that we're comparing ourselves no. to uh, the Beatles <laughs> and the Beatles boys. Yeah, yeah. Or, oh yeah, so, okay, so let's not talk about exactly what we're doing on the record then. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. But you, you, you've you got uh, the, it's in motion. It's in motion, yeah. Mm. Maybe it's not even going to be a record. Maybe it's just going to be singles. Cool. Yeah. And you've had like a little rebrand for it as well. You've got like a, a new logo and stuff, haven't you? Yeah, but I like that. Like each album is a new face. So you mm. get like a new look for each album. I always liked artists that does that. Like a simil- uh, slightly different sound, slightly different yeah. look. It's just boring when they just keep doing yeah. the same I thing album that with after Bjork album. Very heavily. Actually, Bjark always had like a new look and yeah. a new yeah. typography and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like a brand new sound and stuff and the the constant was like her voice. Yeah. That's like, yeah, I remember being excited by that as a teenager. And she, she also has like, yeah, her voice, but she also has like a very specific melodic language yeah. to her. And she, she looks striking whatever she's doing yeah. as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, she doesn't just have to do one thing. It doesn't fall apart if she's trying a different image. I mean, it's boring because you made you make like twelve good songs, mm. and most likely, if you go on and make another album with the same sound, it's gonna be twelve more songs that are just a little bit worse. Yeah, that's kind of what the algorithm wants you to do, though, isn't it? It's like if you if you've struck gold, you've got to kind of repeat doing it. And I think our projects. I'm not sort of just bigging ourselves up because it what we do has problems, but um, <laughs> you know, uh, like constantly changing a sound is good for the for the sanity, isn't it? And like repeating your format again and again and again, that that's probably not that great for your sanity. I think it keeps like us as creators inspired, mm-hmm. but it, because it's like really boring to just repeat yourself and do the same sound over and over again. Just like it's boring to just keep playing the same chords over and over again but there's a limitation to chords like we don't have an infinite amount of them but there's like next to an infinite amount of sound design so that's where we, you really can push it all the time at least that's how I think about it mm-hmm. uh, but also for the audience it's much more inspiring and exciting if like your favorite artist puts out the record and it's something not completely new but at least like a step in a new direction when you were saying that i was thinking that jay and i have probably sometimes done infinite chord progressions and no sound design <laughs> like the opposite of what you just say that's that's doing ourselves a disservice but that's yeah. because you guys are actually good musicians no you it's, know it's, how to um, play it's been really good working with you this weekend because I think you've been like, no, nah, keep it simple, keep it simple, keep it simple. And like, um, yeah, kind of uh, constraining ourselves and kind of fo- forcing ourselves to write some stuff that's more direct and more catchy mm-hmm. has been really good for us. Mm. Um, and, so. by, and, and the other way around, for me, it's been really great because I get an idea and you guys can actually, like if I say, oh, we should try this, mm-hmm. you guys can actually do that. Well, that's cool. That's yeah. nice to hear. I'd like to think we've worked together long enough that we can execute things quickly mm-hmm. and we can get communicate stuff without saying a, a whole lot. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, yeah, on the subject of saying a whole lot, we should probably wrap it up. I need to pick up my child from nursery. You need, Jay needs to go meet his mate. You need to go for dinner with your wife. With my wife. Yeah, my wife. It's me and the wife. Um, Why are you going for dinner? What's for dinner? Oh, fish and chips at the Might pub. Might be fish and chips, chips at, the, at the pub. Nice, say that ten times, fish and chips at the pub. Fish um, and chips at the pub. Yeah. Well, that sounds like an absolute treat. I think we've, we've, we've all got nice evenings in store and yeah, um, nobody open uh, DOW and make music. I think we've, we've earned a, a well-earned break for a day or two because it's been a bit of a bit of a bonanza of music making. I could go for another couple of hours. Hey, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really like, I could really... It's weird. Like yeah. when I work at home, I can sit and make music yeah. that feels like job, yeah. like work, mm. and I'm completely torn out. Mm -hmm. Eight hours, have dinner, walk my dog, and get excited about making music. Come That's home cool. and do another four yeah, hours. Yeah, those breaks are important, aren't they? Yeah, but it's just not just about the break because even though it's like I made music for eight hours, but that was work. <clears throat> yeah, I can still flip into like okay, but now it's cool. fun. Now it's play. So f that's really like not. That's really healthy that you can do that. Like yeah. I mean, I think all of us, to varying extents, do music as our jobs, and there are things that feel like day job, and there are things that feel like fun. And yeah. I think that balance is really good for sanity. I think that seems to be the theme of our chat. Yep. How to stay sane in the music sanity. business. Mm. So yeah, hopefully, um, we get tagged in the sort of self help charts as well as the vaporwave <laughs> podcast charts, of which there are about three yeah. <laughs> others <laughs> but yeah uh, thank you so much for coming all this way thank you for having Carl, me twice twice to my studio with the the slightly hellish commute from from west to northeast and yeah thank you for coming all the way from sweden to the uk we we owe you a trip in return love would love to go i've i've barely dipped my my feet in to the waters of sweden i've got i've got as far as malmo which was just an extension of <laughs> being in Copenhagen. That's um, Sweden, though. Yeah, it was cool. I had a good time, but yeah, I would, I would love to see Sweden properly. And uh, yeah, make some more You can always like crash at my place. Ah, oh, thank you. That's me and Jay, not everybody. Everyone to on this. the podcast <laughs> is welcome to my place. You're gonna regret that. <laughs> Don't dox your location. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Carl. It's been a treat. Yeah, you are. You are our first ever podcast guest. I really hope that's true because I've said that multiple times, but I, I, I believe you were. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Yeah, and um, yeah, we're three th three seasons in, and uh, we've we've made a whole bunch of records since, and um, we're still here. <laughs> so well done, everybody. <laughs> well Thank done, you well guys done for having me. Yeah, well done, Woo! listener, for making it this far yeah. as well. Goodbye. All right, bye bye.